All right, so um, let's start by reviewing um, equivalent quadratic forms, and then we'll get to the learning target here. So our equivalent quadratic forms um, are called equivalent quadratic forms because they all are equal to one another. So if I were to graph a parabola using general form, vertex, or factored form, if they are truly equivalent quadratic forms, it would be the same parabola. What these forms give us are different pieces of information. For instance, the general form, we can look at C and know what the y-intercept is. And by definition, the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So if I put 0 in for x, you can see C is the only thing that's left. Vertex form gives us the vertex. And as you guys found in the past few days, um, you can go from general form to vertex form to find the vertex. And that way you know either your minimum point or your maximum point of your vertex. What's new to us today is factored form. And what factored form tells us is um, they, it describes the roots to us. So if the roots are real numbers, they're x-intercepts. So basically where the parabola crosses the x-axis. They're called roots, though, because not all parabolas cross the x-axis. And when a parabola doesn't cross the x-axis, it means its roots are imaginary. So we can't call everything x-intercepts because if they don't exist, they can't be x-intercepts because they're not on the uh, they're not on that um, on that type of graph. So let's talk about factored forms. So again, just as a reminder, you'll see that a is the only variable all three forms share, and if they're equivalent, a has to be the same in all three quadratic forms. Okay, a is being multiplied by two binomials, x minus root one and x minus root 2. So R stands for root. They're subscripted as 1 and 2, and the order doesn't matter here. It's just so that we know that the roots don't have to be the same thing. So the roots, again, tell us either the x-intercept, if the roots are real, or if the roots are imaginary. And that occurs when we make y equal to 0. So let's go ahead and look at a couple ways that we can find roots. So let's say we have the equation y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. All right, so the first thing I'm going to try to do to get this in factored form is to, you know, brace yourself, to factor. So get it? Factored form can be the result of factoring. So the first thing I'm going to look at is x squared. I don't have a coefficient other than 1 there, so I know my first, the first terms in each binomial has to be x, because x times x is x squared. Now the next term is what's the more challenging term. I need two numbers that multiply to 8, but also add to negative 6. So I'm thinking I have 4 and 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So I'm going to make these negative. Now if you'll remember, negative 4x minus 2x is negative 6x, but negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. So that works. So if I wanted to check to see if I did this right, I could FOIL this, and I would end up with x squared minus 2x minus 4x plus 8. If I combine these, this is negative 6x, and I end up right where I started, which is the goal. Okay, so if I wanted to find the roots now, I would set y equal to 0, and then I would solve. So, on vertex form, remember how we made the parentheses 0 to find the x-coordinate? We're going to do the same thing here. If one of these binomials is equal to 0 and it's multiplied by the other, the whole equation is 0. So if I can make this 0, 0 times anything is 0. That tells me one of the values for the root. So this would be x equals positive 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 times 4 minus 2, which is 2, is still 0. Okay, the other way we can make the equation 0 is if we set x equal to 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2, so 0 times negative 2 is still 0. So our roots occur at 4, 0, and 2, 0. Okay, let's try one more. So let's do, 
um, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to start by factoring this. I again don't have a leading coefficient up here. So I'm going to say x times x to make x squared. This is a really hard one. I have 1 here. So I need two numbers that multiply to 1. <coughs> it's 1 and 1. But also add to 2. Well, that would be positive 1 and positive 1 makes 2. So there is our uh, factored form, but you may be thinking, well, couldn't you write this like this? And the answer is yes. So this is a unique situation. Since this is a perfect square, right, mm -hmm. 1, we actually have, remember when we completed the square for vertex form, we actually have this in a completed square form, or vertex form, as well as factored form. So, um, in this case, the vertex and the root, they reside on the same x value. So to find that, we're going to set y equal to 0, and then we're going to solve for x. So if I, if I take the square root of 0, I still get 0. I don't need to this is there. And then x plus 1. So what does x have to be? To make this side zero, it has to be negative one. So my root happens at negative one zero, and this is called a double root. And the reason it's called a double root is because it's a root and it's squared. That just means it's the same binomial multiplied by itself twice. Okay, so my graph would look something like if this is negative one, it would look something like this. The double root, it hits the x-axis and then pops back up. Okay, now there are situations where um, we won't be able to factor problems out and we'll actually need to use um, a tool. So let's look at one of those situations. So y equals x squared plus 3x. Uh, plus 2. So there's not, oops, not 2. Sorry, plus 5 is what I meant. Apparently, we could have made that one work. Okay, so there's not a number times itself that adds to 5, or that multiplies to 5, but also adds to 3. So we're going to use something called the quadratic formula, which I think that all of you have seen in the past. So the quadratic formula is this, y equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this divided by 2a. Now, you may be wondering what a, b, and c are. Well, in general form, Remember, we had, if we have a number here, the 1 is A, this is B, and this is C. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the equation. So negative B, which is 3, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 3 again, minus 4 times 1 times 5. All of this divided by 2 times 1. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and simplify. We end up with negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 20 divided by 2. Okay, we're in a bit of a, a predicament here. because My screen won't go down anymore, so I will write over here. So if I simplify this, end up with the square root of a negative number. Yikes. Which, uh, which can't be. So that means that our roots are actually imaginary, and this is our root. This whole thing, negative 3 plus root, root of negative 11 divided by 2, and negative 3 minus the square root of 11 divided by 2. The whole thing is our root, and it's imaginary. So what we know about this graph is that it does not touch the x-axis. Okay.